from Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host... We're not on yet. There we go. Uh, this is City Controller Kaz Kotowski. Uh, we haven't got our video up yet, but uh, we, here we go. This is City Controller Kaz Kotowski, and I've had many interesting guests over the year. And this one, I gotta say, is one of my better guests. I kind of found him wandering around my front yard one day. He's been the subject of a lot of complaints, uh, and uh, we're trying to, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to do this, but uh, we're gonna introduce our next guest, go ahead. Hey everybody, my name is Skunky, and I am here to talk about things skunk related and or eerie related, whichever you prefer. The lines are open. You certainly, uh, you, uh, you, you can tell a lot because you have no fear. Nobody's going to recognize you. Yeah, nobody has any idea who I am. Not even me. You know, to, uh, the, the late Jim Thompson was here, uh, you would uh, you'd be an endangered species. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was he a, a hunter? Uh, he was a skunk hunter. Ooh. Supreme. There, there hasn't been a show like this since uh, Randy Brewer. I <laughs> <laughs> got the best of Mario and I gotta admit Skunky I don't know who you are but you got the best of me well well, thank you sir this, I, what, I, this is what happens when you you troll the public and tell them you know anybody's <laughs> welcome to come on board here but yeah this is this is what happens when you just let people wander in there you go well I, I guess maybe you know it's, it's I hope people think this is, uh, you, you can still call in uh, yeah, once do. again yes the rules as normal as always, uh, <laughs> the, the rules as always are: uh, let's keep the show uh, clean, uh, take no personal attacks. Uh, any subject uh, is uh, fair game, and uh, I know I'm going to read about this one, either in the paper or on TV. <laughs> but uh, anything's fair game, and uh, once again, it's your show, your hour. Uh, talk about anything you like, and. Uh, with that, we'll turn. You feel free to call the number that's on the screen. Uh, last week, Skunky, I can't call you Skunky, right? Please do. Thank oh. you. Can I call you Kaz? Sure. Okay. What, what a thing on President's Day! I knew this would be a different show. <laughs> a lot of people thought we wouldn't be on the air. Yeah. Maybe they still think so, but maybe that's why no one's called yet. Oh, they will. I hope. I mean, I had some calls earlier. Uh, getting back to some problems that people had called about. Uh, I made a couple of notes here. Just got to find them. I must say you took me by surprise. Well, I most certainly would like to talk about the potholes. Oh, yeah. You know what? Well, it's just a bad time of year, but uh, go ahead. I don't think there are enough of them, and they're not deep enough. You want, a, you want more potholes? I want more potholes and I want deeper potholes because it's very hard for me to take a bath in these little shallow potholes. So you, so you would, you, uh oh, here. Oh, we're in trouble. Me. Go ahead, caller. Hey, tell that stinker not to be talking about eerie potholes. <laughs> well, he, he brings a unique perspective. You know, well, we're complaining about him. He seems to like them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because he makes a lot of them. <laughs> he does. I do. I'm pretty heavy. <laughs> I mean, he goes driving around town at 88 miles an hour. Who, the, a skunky here? Yep. I have been known to do that. Well, I think people have never seen a skunk drive before. I'll tell you right now, the police had no idea what was going on when I was driving down the road today. Uh, they, you know, they're just right down the hall. They they're right be. around. I had to drive around to get here, so they're looking at me. Hey, what would you think about taking a skunky through TSA at the airport? What oh, do you think? Yeah. I'll do it. Hey, you have anything you want to add? I want to know is it is Skunky there to help us get rid of his friends or is he there to be a pain? Well, we had that discussion earlier. I told him if Jimmy was around, he'd be an endangered. Remember Jimmy Thompson? Yes, I do. He would have been an endangered species. 
Yeah, but the problem is we're not allowed to shoot at them anymore. Well, you're allowed to you're allowed to club skunky. Oh man. Or you can drown skunky. Oh, that's not fun. You just can't shoot skunky. Oh. None of those options are valid. I don't want to get that close. Well, no, he's uh, well. You know, I'm a little on edge right now <laughs> because that tail's uh, you know. You gotta watch out. I yeah. can't tell. It's, did you see a tail? That's been twitching. Yeah, when that tail goes up, <laughs> down. All right, talk it to you later. Hey, you, you got no complaints today? No. Come on, you got to complain about something. Got to be it, something that bothers you, no? No, nothing bothers me. I don't go outside. <laughs> so you're not in favor of his pothole thing, all right? No. Okay. Well, you're down one. Okay, I accept that. All right. Thank you. I knew you'd be some le levity on this one. <laughs> yeah, so, what are you doing with my garbage anyway? You know. Uh, you know what? That's the thing. I I need you guys to not pick up garbage sometimes to leave it out a little longer so that I have a chance. Me and my friends can get out and get some food. Oh, yeah, I, I had a couple of your friends one. <laughs> I don't want to tell you what happened to the one though. Oh no. Go ahead, caller. Uh, Kaz, I'm sorry. I want to change the subject. Is that okay? Oh, absolutely. Yes. We're just... Uh... Not that I'm not interested in potholes, but I think this is a kind of important. Yeah, go ahead. Anything. It's your show. That young man that they're looking for. Yes. Okay. And the good people that went out two weekends in a row uh, all along the Bayfront, all along the Lower East Side and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, but don't a lot of those businesses like... Hammett and that have security cameras. Did, why didn't the police look into this sooner? Maybe they could have found something. If this kid, for instance, I'm mm -hmm. just saying for instance, if he walked onto the ice and fell in, God forbid, I mean, he, they, he's not the kind of kid that would run away from home. Something happened to him. That's, there's no doubt. In, uh, I'm, you know, uh, I thought what uh, Adrian Ewing and the rest of the people did can't say enough about Mr. Ewing. No, that's a, a, a nice gesture, you know, and as when you speak about the cameras, uh, just around City Hall, I was told one day, and I was amazed, Yeah. there are probably, uh, right in the vicinity here of uh, Perry Square, Oh yes. between Gannon, the uh, courthouse, and uh, businesses. Erie, the Erie Club and right. businesses, and I'm sure the police, they're not telling us everything, and that's typical, because there's a lot of things they don't want us to... Uh, but if they waited too mm -hmm. long to ask about the security cameras... Uh, you know, some tells me they didn't, but uh, I'm sure they, that would have been the first thing they would have done was access cameras. I just, I, it's just heartbreaking that, that poor, those poor parents mm -hmm. and this young man, I mean, I, it, it's heartbreaking. And I congratulate all those people. It was cold. They went out two weekends in a row, you know, more and more people are getting involved in doing that, and they were to be commended. I'm so proud of my city, and uh, people like Adrian and, and other people that organized it, they were to be commended, and I hope and pray that they do find him. I, w I was told uh, by some people that, uh, you know, are involved around here, the police have been uh, pretty good with the family. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't ever get into their business because I learned a long time ago when you think they're not working, they really are. Yeah. But I, I'm sure. I'm sure if they have any leads, they're trying to. But all he did was go outside to throw the garbage, and well, that, now he that's can't what, be found. That's what makes it frustrating. It's a, you know, it's sometimes it's the simplest things in life that balloon into big things where, you know, we're all thinking he's going to get abducted in a mall or something like that. And but here it's right in front of his own house. Or if he decided to take a little walk, God forbid he walked onto the bay, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just guessing. I, I was, we were talking at Mass yesterday, and I thought, you know, all this could be possible, but your heart has to go out to those parents. I mean, what a heartache. And how many times have we read about... Uh, where kids were discovered uh, 10, 15 years later, huh. you know, some of them alive, and, you know, amazing stories about, and it, what, what gets you is that you feel so helpless. I know. And I'm sure the police do, because here he is in front of his house, probably, like you say, there's not a lot of cameras there. Oh, no. But maybe along the waterfront or some. Yeah. But uh, seemingly, you know, just an innocuous act, like going out and uh, taking out the garbage or something, as far as all the gun 
violence we've had in our city lately. They, they're really trying to be on top of it. It's scary, Cass. And they do have a good closure rate. Yes, they do. But you know, there's some things that, uh, uh, my dad was a police officer a long time ago, and he used to tell me that, you know, you can watch TV all you want, but it really comes down to hard work and tips. And oh, yeah. If there's nothing out there, sometimes the most frustrating thing in the world is that you, you, there's nothing there to, you know, you, you just reach a dead, a dead end. And they're talking about the, you know, the guns and stuff. The criminals are the ones that will have the guns because they're not going to turn their guns in. No, there's, what they're doing is they're stealing them from Homes. good citizens. And then they file off the numbers yeah. and sell them. So, but uh, enjoy your program. Hey, uh, no, we just wanted to add a little levity, but you know what? And I'm sure my friend Skunky will agree, uh, uh, you know, when we think about that young man or, or others that have gone missing, that, that's a, that does affect you because here we are two weeks down the line and we haven't heard a word. No. Yeah. It no. doesn't, doesn't seem to be an abduction, no. at least for money or anything. So. They weren't a wealthy family. They're not a, uh, you know, he wasn't the type of a young man who would run away from home. He was very close to his parents from what everybody has said. And I, I, my heart just goes out to the family, and I pray that they do find him. If I guess anything, if I hope for anything, I hope that uh, maybe that he did, you know, maybe he is somewhere. I hope so. On his own volition for whatever reason. Yeah, I he, do too. You'd rather see that than him being a victim of crime. I know. Thanks, Kath. Hey, call up any time you like. That is a, uh, that story there is just one that's hard to believe, you know? Yeah, yeah, it is. To have your son go out, and I know we were making a joke about garbage, but to go out be, you know, to not be around is, uh, how, can, how, do you, how do you figure that one? Yeah, I don't know. Go ahead, caller. Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, Kaz. Good afternoon. Uh, you know about this young kid over there, it's, you know about this young boy, it's, uh, it's sad and everything. But the only thing that puzzles me in my mind is he went outside mm -hmm. and didn't come back in for a half, an, half an hour. I mean, wouldn't the parents or somebody in the house want to know where he's at? You know, you, I, I, don't, want to, I don't know because I didn't read the whole story, but... Yeah, no, well, here's another thing. I, 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 don't, I don't want to... You know, they say this kid's a real nice kid. He probably is. Did he belong to a gang? Did he... The guys that, you know... Uh, That's why I'm sure the police are doing, you know, the best to... You know, because somebody that disappeared like that, that's too fast. That's too fast. Oh, I know the police are doing a good job, and the people out there are doing a good job and everything. But it, but it, it, it is tough because here, here's a case where, like I said earlier, you know, it's just a normal act. You know, you go outside your front lawn... Yeah. And then all of a sudden you're gone, you know. Yeah, there's, there's something wrong with that, that whole step there. He, he, he either was forced away or was a bunch of kids that knew him, and, uh, you know. It's sure, it's sure going to have a lot of people probably watching their kids a little tighter now. Oh, boy, you, you hit the nail right on the head there. You know, it, it never had to be that way. I mean, when I, when I was a kid, like, my, I know. my parents would tell me to go walk over to the bakery or something, you know. Yeah, right. You should keep the doors open, sit on the porch, yeah. and say hello to everybody. You can't do that no more. No, something happened, and it's it's crazy. Yep. All right, thank you, guys. Hey, thank you for calling. All right, bye. That's one thing about Erie. It's a very uh, tight-knit town. Yeah, yeah. I know there's frustration, but uh, knowing a lot of the police officers, I know they're probably, a lot of them are, you know, really trying to figure this out. Yeah, and it won't be they're, in. Out, they're out there. They're looking. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Kaz. Yeah. Yeah, Kaz. Yeah, go ahead. You're on. Hey, I, I got to be honest with you here. I think Jim Thompson be rolling over in his grave if he's seen a skunk sitting beside you on the taxpayer hotline. Oh, he would. But you know what? He had, uh, if no, you... No, 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 this show's really gone to crap. No, I don't think so. Taxpayer hotline for people to call in there about issues, and you got a skunk sitting beside you. Well, if you have issues, I'm perfectly able to take them as well. I can be serious. Yeah, I'm still waiting for you. And I've given you a fair time now, so what would you like to complain about? Oh, he's off the air. Hey. Yep. Can't please everyone. Yep. Well, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, Kaz? 
he claimed, you know, he think, well, I'll tell you what, when I walk, walk around town, uh, a lot of people, they, they watch the show. Uh, I've gotten complaints when I haven't been on the air. Yeah. I'm not worrying about it. Yeah. You know, but uh, getting back to, uh, we had some some issues. Oh, they were talking about, remember we came up with the, uh, the gentleman was worried about the one-way sign on 8th and French? Yes. Yeah, the one, uh, and I did check it out. He's absolutely right. It is very hard to read. Right. You almost have to be on top of it. The one that's on the left side of the street, uh, if you're in the right, I'm not saying you shouldn't be looking, but really if you're fixated on driving straight ahead, you're probably not looking over to the left that much. Is it blocked? Is there not a clearance? No, the right one is uh, definitely blocked. What it is, it's actually on, it's not on French Street, it's on 8th Street. So it's the corner of the uh, parking ramp right. knocks it completely out. Oh. Until you almost have to be at the uh, crosswalk to physically see it. So we turned that into the traffic engineer, and I do hope, uh, you know, she said she would look at it, and I'll get back to her, and we'll see what happens with that. But uh, I'm sure if it's a problem, we can move it. She will, but uh, yeah, definitely it, it is uh, hidden. And that, that, that gentleman is absolutely right. Uh, another gentleman called about the activity at the forge. I've been trying to, well, we think it was Wemco, but I'm gonna to try to check in on that. Right. Uh, 12th, and, uh, 12th Street around Green Garden, we turned that one in. And a gentleman was asking about the intermodal unit down there at the uh, Bayfront, one of your playgrounds. Right. A lot of your friends hang out there. Exactly. Uh, Lovely place. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, to getting back to that, uh, he was asking about the taxes. And it was, it was uh, kind of strange that if you read the paper this week, they had a little article about uh, school district and the uh, city are joining forces in trying to rectify that. There was a judge's ruling that uh, the only businesses in there that would be tax exempt would be those that had a direct bearing on the operations or the promotion, it was some, I'm not sure the exact language, but it had to do with a, uh, a direct result of being part of the Port Authority or involved in one of their projects. But uh, of course the city and the school district are saying that this is a for-profit business that, that is there for that and not for, uh, you know, not being like a tourist, right. a tourist place or something like that or, you know. So it'll be interesting, but uh, to that gentleman, I think it was John that called. Uh, yes, we're going to, uh, you know, I'll get a little more information on that, but I knew there were some issues on that building when they built it. You know, what would be taxable and what wouldn't inside of there. Uh, I didn't get an answer on Herbinage, why we picked that. I will get together with the treasurer and get you an answer on why the Hermitage Bank was chosen as the uh, lockbox facility. Uh, once again, a reminder that uh, taxes were mailed out uh, last week and that uh, your school taxes, if you're looking for them, were mailed out in June or, Ju uh, actually I think it was about July of last year. So if you need any any copies, you better contact the treasurer's office because they did come to you in the mail uh, during the middle part of uh, 2012. And we, we had a phone call, if you remember, Skunky, about uh, solicitation by uh, different uh, people like uh, concerned the chiefs of police. Right. Right. And uh, it, uh, when, I, when I called the chief's office, uh, they have nothing directly to do with this organization. It provides no funds to the city of Erie. So my advice to those people are uh, use your own discretion, but it does not in any way help our, our department or our city directly. And uh, my advice has always been, you know, support, support your local police uh, when they have their fund drives or if you're so inclined to give them a contribution, you know, send it to the local FOP or uh, I'm sure, you know, like uh, we have various nonprofit groups that donate to, uh, to the city in the name of the police. Is there a way to tell when they're legitimately calling? Is you, there any? Well, you probably, you probably could call like the Attorney General's office. Uh, it used to be we had the Better Business Bureau. We still have one, but I think it's in Pittsburgh. Uh -huh. And, uh, and that, if I remember right, that's under the Attorney General 
of PA. So I'm sure they can tell you whether their group is registered. Right. Uh, yeah, a lot of them kind of high pressure you. I know I've had them call my house where they said, uh, well, why are you against buying tickets for kids or something? I'm not, but I don't know who you are, you know. My recommendation would be take down their number. If, yeah. they, if they will legitimately give you a phone number so that you can call them back and make a donation, take down their number and then run a check and make sure they're legitimate. Yeah, and so, if they're not, then go, like you said, to your local FOP. Yeah, some of them, like, you know, some of them that do collect, they're, uh, they're, we'll get back to that. Go ahead, caller. You're talking about those charities that are looking for donations, like from the sheriff's department? And the yeah, a lot of them are just uh, marketing groups that, uh, you know, they're hired by uh, these. Uh, I think they're out of Maryland. Yeah, some of them are probably. I wouldn't doubt it. Probably, probably very liberal laws down there. And they have a whole bunch of them in there. And they're just fishing. Yeah, and yeah. some of them, you know, they, they, if they collect a dollar, you're lucky if maybe, and I won't say I know for a fact, but only a fraction that really goes to where it's intended. I get those calls all the time, and I tell them I, I get, make my donations to the local enforcement over here, and I do not, they, they'll give me their phone numbers and everything else. There's, you know, they're, they're on, on top of all that. Yeah. But I tell them I don't want to give to them. I will give to my own yeah. area. I, 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 I don't blame you, John, because, you know, in most cases, very little of the money actually goes to the cause that's, you know. Yeah, it goes to, it goes to the handling of it. Yeah. And the marketer. I've got a, a hypothetical for you. What's that? A person has expired his terms for being elected, and now all of a sudden he cannot longer go to work. Mm -hmm. Is he eligible for unemployment? Uh, normally not. Like in my case, John, uh, I do not pay unemployment compensation. Doesn't the city pay unemployment compensation for you? Not for an elected official, no. That's an exemption that uh, we are not as, in other words, my salary here is based strictly on my job as city controller. Okay? Well, you can't be doing a very good job. Why? <laughs> Your salary's so damn small. Well, you know, that that's not my call. You know that, John. Well, that's those seven, seven goofballs that sit on city council. Well, while I've never, ever, you know, let it be a topic of uh, importance, you know, it, I, I'm, I'm glad I got what I got, and I'm glad I'm doing what I'm doing. Of course, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it after December, but... Uh, that's true there, but they, they almost doubled the mayor, and is he worth double? Well, I think, I think they need to, they should have looked at all these. They should have looked at a proportionate raise instead of a, a one big lump sum. Yeah, like, like a cost of living. I think that would have been a fair way. A cost of living? I haven't got a good cost of living for how many years? No, but I mean, like, you know, my salary's been fixed. And I'm not, like I say, I'm not complaining, okay? But it's been fixed at 12 years. Well. And, you know, uh, when you get back to unemployment, an interesting thing happened once, though, John. Uh, and I'm not sure I understand how it happened. Do you remember out there in one of the townships? Yeah. Uh, one of the gentlemen did get unemployment? Yeah. It's because the way they, f I think uh, some of the township jobs are factored that the actual salary for being in the office is very low, but the a job that's attached to it like some of them out there are roadmasters and uh, treasurers and secretaries. On that, they may pay unemployment compensation. Does the, does the city have working compensation for its elected officials? Do they have what, John? Workman compensation for elected officials. Uh, not unemployment, but I think work working comp probably. But uh, I do know that no elected official has ever been able to get unemployment because that just, uh, you know, you know your term and that's it. Well, in other words, you don't have to show up to work as long as you're elected for such and such amount of time. You're getting your check so many times a year regardless. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Like I've said to people all along, uh, you, in this job, you don't have any sick days or days off. You know, they're flexible as to what you want to do, but you have to answer once again to the 103,000 employers you have. That's true. 
you know, if you don't want to show up for work, you know, your quality will show up. I, I'd like to think that, well, if, you, if people that know me know, I haven't uh, taken an awful lot of days off. And I don't think I've ever abused the privilege. No, you get everybody sick down there and they got to take off. Yep. Now, I'm, I'm fortunate I have a great staff, but I still like to show up for work. I think... Well, uh, they, they appreciate you as much as you appreciate them. But in the past, John, there have been people that, did, yes, did not... Uh, have not shown up, you know. Yeah, you're the watchdog of that whole thing. Just think if Mill Creek School District had a watchdog, that $5 million that got shuffled wouldn't have got shuffled. Well, you know, one of the things I noticed when I was on the school board was what is missing in that whole process, and I remember one time our local uh, newspaper uh, took a shot at my office and said that it was not needed, it was uh, archaic, old, but properly used this office as an independent office, not, not attached to either the council or the mayor's office, has the ability to stop what happened in Mill Creek. Well, sure, because you, you approved the checks. Right. Now, what, happened, what happens in school districts, and I'm not saying this is what happened in Mill Creek, but, you know, you, you have a month between meetings, and depending on how often, you know, you, keep, you demand updates and everything, the possibility can exist that things can happen. Well, you know, sooner or later that's going to happen in a city there with their bi-monthly bi meetings. A city this size with mm -hmm. so many problems out there should have weekly meetings. But the difference is, John, like all things, all transfers and all checks have to pass through my office, okay? And then there, there, is, a, there is an intermediate that watches it. I, I think in the, in the case of, like, School districts, they don't get audited around the clock, and there's nobody there checking every day except for the people that are directly involved. And I'm not saying they're, you know, that, that, that that's bad, but it has the ability that you don't have enough checks and balances. That's why you have a treasurer of the various school districts. The, the members of the district, the, they don't watch that. They just approve and disapprove bills. Well, I think, think in the city school district, there is, there is nobody between the board and the administration. Correct? Well, you would think that the... We don't have an elected treasurer that, I isn't mean... There, there, isn't there a treasurer, though? On the board? No, in the school district. The, well, the, the finance director is probably what you're talking about. Yeah. But, you know, the finance directors answer... Every day, they they, come, they fall under the uh, domain of the superintendent. Administration. Right. Well. And see, their uh, school district law is kind of weird. You know, the school district, although they are the bosses, you know, they abrogate their everyday authority by state law to the superintendent who runs it. But he's just he's just a figurehead there. Who's that? The superintendent of the schools. Well, it depends on how he wants to run it. You know, some have a very, they become very big and they become very important and their job is to keep five directors happy. Yeah. You know, because remember, they're, 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 they serve at the pleasure of the board. The board appoints the superintendent, they appoint the, the secretary to the board and they uh, hire the solicitor. But after that, a lot of the everyday appointments, even though the board okays them, the everyday employee falls under the... Uh, the, you know, the care of the superintendent and the direction. A board member just can't go in there and start ordering teachers around or anything like that. That's true. You know, there's, there's a reason. Now, they, they, they direct their comments through the, through the uh, what do you call it, the superintendent. Yeah, what happened is, you know, it's like if you understand fund accounting, you really, funds are for designed for specific reasons. And, you know, your, your money in, that's in a capital fund, uh, you know, the bondholders bought those bonds if, that, if, if in that case that's where the money came from. Capital fund, and if it's not going to be used, what happens to the bond? If the what? The capital funds, in this case, weren't going to be used. Mm -hmm. That's why they switched the $5 million over to another fund. Well, they, if I understood right, and, I, and I'm not there to understand it, uh, I think it went into the general fund. It went into the general fund, so mm -hmm. they could go into the new building. It was it was fuzzy 
heavy mass. Well, that's what your that's what your capital fund is for is for large for buildings and large building projects. True. So, well, we'll let you go. Hey, uh, what do you think of my guest here? Wonderful. He yeah, should have a little bit of orange with him there, though. A little bit of orange and a little bit of yellow, like he's been eating. Yeah, we have to get him. Uh, hey, you know, this, you probably you know we have a lot of his friends up there. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, too bad they, they, you know, you can't do much with them, though. Around my backyard, and they even got that long one with the long tail and the, and the pushed-out nose. You know, Mr. Possum? Yeah. <laughs> Good friend of mine. There's a lot of those guys around. I, I told him we haven't had a guest on this show like that since the uh, late Mario Bagnoni had uh, Randy Brewer on the show. Parked there once in a while. Remember Randy when he came dressed one time? Yes. Randy was a real doll. He had earrings and everything. <laughs> Look cute. Actually, I, I my guest is going to my guest is going to talk to uh, Randy when he sees him. I, think I know who your guest is. <laughs> oh, you do? You, you, you can't tell who it is. Yeah, I can, but I just by the, the puffiness of his jaw. Oh man. T A T. Oh wow. Yeah, I don't know. I can't he, talk. I can't say anything. He showed up. I, I caught him in, in my yard out there monkeying around. Let's so leave the fist. about monkeying around. We were talking about the catacombs and everything else in the schools last year. Yeah. But he sold the bricks to the alumni and everything else. Yeah. He saved all that brick back from all that mosaic work that they were going to rip out. And the school district wasn't going to give them money so we could keep all that hand, handcrafted water fountains. Hmm. Yeah, we did. I think they're incorporated in a new school, if I remember right. We, the alumni, collected all the money. That was good, though. You know, I was uh, Nancy Nielsen, who was my uh, cohort on the school board. My, uh, she did a lot of that. Uh, she was really into it and made sure that uh, we had resolutions to make sure that those uh, fountains did not disappear under the ball. That's because we we got the money to restore it all, and Lipchick he did his damnedest to make sure we got it all too. When they were talking about doing that to academy, we uh, walked around the school. They had a lot of those uh, frisettes, they call them. Yes. And uh, you you know, it, it was strange. Like academy and East were almost like sister schools at the time. True. And uh, the architecture that was in there, it's good that we saved some of it. Well, sure, you should have saved it all. Yeah. Well, you know, you'd like to, John, but. Uh, I know, but I, why should you destroy that handcrafted work? I can't tell you how many alumni actually wanted bricks. Well, I got one, and I use it as a bathroom doorstop. Well. <laughs> and if my wife gets in the way, I, get it, I use it for another purpose. Oh. Whoa, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, he's he hung up on us. <laughs> no, hey, John didn't. Thanks for calling, John. <laughs> <laughs> I've had a few bricks thrown at me from time to time, so yeah, you might you know, get a few more. That... I may now. I mean, I guess I got some haters out there, but we'll, we'll deal with that. I do have a proposal, though. If we can get me on the payroll, yeah. I can get my friends to help with refuse collection. Oh, I bet you can. We could save you guys some money on your refuse collection. Put one of these at the back of every truck. Oh, at least one of us. We got possums, we got raccoons, we got wolves. The only problem is your your friends sometimes, at, you know, when you leave the window open, <laughs> they tend to, uh, how do you say, uh, aerate the air a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sometimes. You have to you have to be careful. Some of us aren't as in control as others. Yeah, we won't go into the ways of getting rid of you, because I know you got, those things didn't sound too good. No, no, those aren't cool. I'm not really a fan. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. Hi, um, I'm calling about the streets department. When they uh, plowed uh, the streets last year, mm -hmm. uh, they they redid all the, like, 43rd and Zimmerman and McClellan, and they did it towards the end of the fall. So now the first plowing came by, and it ripped up all that new pavement. It did. Where, 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 whereabouts, ma'am? Okay, if you go for, on the east side of town, 43rd off of um, Kohler, Rice, uh, Bird Drive, Wagner. Right. Just redid that at the end of fall. And we waited three years to um, have it done. And what happened is when they plowed the streets, the first plow, they dug up all the pavement. Was it like, maybe it was the pavement not really, was it like bumpy or something? I, they didn't, I hate to say this on the air, but they didn't really do a good job. It's like they 
hit and missed. We finally waited four years to get it paved because it was so bad. The, bu- the buses actually turned off of rice. Yeah. Tipping into big craters. Now, it's act- the holes where they ripped it up, there, it's actually on 43rd? Actually on 43rd, yes. Okay, and it's in the area of like Kohler Rice and Wagner. And it seems like the, fir- the first plow job that they did, it tore up all that new pavement. So now mm-hmm. it's starting to, with every plow, they keep taking more and more away. I'm just wondering, did they use different material, or it seems like this year the pavement hasn't been as good. If they use different material, are they going to redo these streets? Do you know who did it? Was it uh, private or was it us? Well, that's the problem, because they told us in the beginning of the season that they had a list, so we kept checking and checking. Yeah. And one said McCormick, one said another one, one said, no, it's not the city, and I was getting a runaround. And then finally, towards the end of fall, when it started getting cold, they, like, rushed to get it done. And now that it's winter, mm-hmm. and they plow, they're digging up actual that, all that good pavement. And as they dig, they're tearing up. Now, these all have curbs around here. Yeah. Up the grass, too. I mean, chunks of grass. Now, there's a curve, but somehow they managed to get the chunks of grass along with the pavement that they're digging up. And I just wonder, does the city redo all these things? or if In the past, if, if they found that the problem was uh, faulty material, That's they, what I'm wondering. they have had the contractors replace it. Uh, I like I say I don't know who did this job whether it was us or a private contract I'll have to check on it for you I was getting the run around on that one because I thought they were going to start at the beginning of the season mm-hmm. they give a list at the beginning of the, uh, the season who's going to get paid because we've been waiting and some of them say on there whether it's going to be private or whether it's our department doing it right and I did remember that I thought it said the city but then when I called the city it said no they were contracting that out to you had two of them McCormick and another one uh yeah there's I'm trying to think who won the bids last year okay. there's usually two or three companies like Russell Standard uh-huh. uh McCormick and then there's another I'm trying to think of the other one that uh there's like three usually usually three sometimes four companies that bid on those jobs around or do we have to complain or how do we get attention to those areas? Well, you're going to have to call the, uh, I would call streets and also engineering okay. Okay. It, or public works is, you know, one of the public works is over all of them okay. and, you know, tell them of your complaint and I'll certainly pass it on too. I have another question. You were talking about schools mm-hmm. in Georgia. Um, I have family who live out there. Once you become retirement age, Right. You don't pay school tax. You don't pay it or it stays the same? You don't pay it. Oh, that's, a, that's interesting. Uh, some states, what they actually do is uh, when you reach a certain age as uh, retirement and both you and your spouse are retired or in the case of just one person, if you're retired and nobody else in that house has any income outside of retirement income, uh, your taxes are frozen. And, but this is a new one where you don't pay any. But, I, you know, it's, uh, I'm sure... Taxes keep going up, and my husband's retired. Um, I'm on disability. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they don't give you much. No, I, they got to come up with a way, I think, that... Uh, this is why I think a switch... In, what a lot of the states do down south is they switch more to uh, income or they switch more to a, uh, a sales tax rather than hitting the, the retail end of it. Right. I mean, the... Uh, not the retail end, the uh, real estate end, you know, the property taxes. And, and, I, and I would be in favor of that in Pennsylvania because I think at a time when you're young and you're working, you have the ability to pay income tax, you have the ability to pay sales tax, knowing that when you get older, you know, your property taxes will be decreased. It's just interesting, though, that, you know, people who've never had children and mm-hmm. who are, like, 70 years old are paying these astronomical prices for school and they don't have the income to cover it. Eventually, they can actually lose their home or do that reverse mortgage just to keep up with their taxes, if you know what I mean. Yeah. they got to come up with a new There's no doubt about it that uh, the old way we did things with just strictly heavy reliance on real estate taxes has, has got to change, I think. But, but unfortunately for us, those changes have to come in Harrisburg and it can't be enacted locally. Uh, 
and, and uh, what I would have, you know, like, I, I, try, I try to tell people is write a letter to uh, your representative wherever you are, you know, whether it's uh, Flo Fabrizio, Ryan Bizarro, uh, Patrick Harkins, any of those, uh, Sean Wiley, uh, just tell them, you know, how you feel about it and the more people talk about it. I know the League of Cities, which Erie is tied in with, frequently when we meet, uh, we go over those those issues that uh, trying to, you know, change the taxation, trying to trying to help the older cities uh, survive because definitely real estate is not one of them anymore. The Erie taxes are so much higher than Mill Creek. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that has to do with, uh, to be fair, I mean, uh, if Mill Creek was to ever get a fire department, uh, they would find out real quick uh, that their taxes would go up or if they had the size, uh, for instance, for years we supported our, ourselves the water and the sewer and you know now the authority has kind of spread that cost out but when you look at Erie we have you know f a very large police department, very large fire department, very large public works, a lot of these places and I get real irritated with Summit that they're getting all this gambling money and yet they got state police from Pennsylvania taking care of their police problems where they should be able to afford their own now. Well, the casino was supposed to help us. Unfortunately, we lost that bit. Yeah, we did, and that would have helped us a lot. But, you know, it, it's one of those things that uh, in the city, unfortunately, we, we, we're we paying for a lot of things that make this area great, and, and our tax money for years has gone to fund it, uh, such as a zoo, such as... Uh, you know, having having a nice, uh, you know, full time water, sewer, police, fire, all that, uh, refuse pickup, you know, everything like that. Speaking of refuse, Mill Creek, they can put anything out on their streets. They pay a certain amount, you know. Yeah, they they they're contracted through uh, waste management, I believe. Okay, so why isn't the Erie that way? Because you know, we we have to wait till spring cleanup once a year to throw away stuff, where they get the opportunity to do it. Every day they put garbage out. Yeah, I, you know, I never compared. Uh, from what I heard, if we were to hire waste management, they did a study once bef long before I was here, and uh, they claimed that the cost to have waste management actually do the city and take away my friend Skunky's job would have been uh, high, more costlier than actually having our own people do it. But I know a lot of people wonder why we, we don't have uh, large-scale pickup more often. And that's something I think, maybe if I ever had anything I'd like to see, I'd, I'd like to see people either issued stickers or something that they could put them out at various times. That would be nice, because Pick, you wait once a year. Yeah, because I'd be, I'd be truthful with you. When they pick up the garbage in at that time of year, I'm usually out of town, because uh, it's a time when we, we try to fit in, uh, my wife's off of, uh, on vacation, so we try to you know visit our kids and stuff. So, and I don't have a lot to throw out, but like if in the middle of the year, I decide to get rid of a refrigerator or something like that, very large, it's 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 going to have to stick around the house until the the pickup. Well, actually, the electric company will pick up your refrigerator and give you fifty dollars for it. Yeah, I, whoa, that's what I didn't even know about that. And if you get a new refrigerator, they'll pay you fifty dollars for getting a new one. That's a nice deal. It is a nice deal. I cashed in on that one. So I can remember that because uh, we're going to be buying one for, uh, for uh, somebody very, very close to me shortly. Well, there you go. You call the electric company. They'll come pick it up. And if you get a new one, you show them the receipt, and you get it $50 again. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. But, uh, yeah, you know, when you, when you see, like, the uh, what do you call your representatives, uh, tell them about how you feel about taxes, you know. Thank you for your time. Yep. I, I try to work on them all the time. I, I I think that the taxation system in Pennsylvania is pretty bad. Yeah. It needs to be upgraded. I don't know what taxes are, but let's get back to the refrigerator. You're buying me a refrigerator? Uh, not you, no. Oh, you said someone very close you to you. You don't need one. You, you, oh, come on. I thought you like your war, your food. Uh, room temperature? Room yeah, temperature, you're right. Huh? Yeah, this is true. <laughs> Look at that. We get... People? <laughs> I, I know it ain't for me. It's got to be for you. Oh, wow. I what think, do you think? You're very likable. I think people would wave at you. Well, yeah, but I think they'd like your <laughs> autograph. <laughs> I think I, we can handle that after. I, I can't see the clock, I, and I can't tell time. I so. can't believe the number of people waving at you. <laughs> and we still got, well, we still got 12 more minutes. Oh, sweet, sweet. Let's see if anybody else can call up and hate on me. 
No, I, I don't think anybody really hates you. I think you. I'm going to cry about that, you know? I might not get any sleep tonight. Uh, you think you'll be okay. <laughs> I, I promise I won't use the uh, Louisville slug run if you come oh, my neighbor. Oh, thank you. I appreciate okay. that. <laughs> yeah, I got to turn in that complaint, though. I, yeah. It, I got to believe maybe they maybe the road wasn't really leveled properly. Yeah. Because hot plows shouldn't usually dig it up unless right, it's right. kind of rough. Go ahead, caller. Oh, Ken, uh, I just wanted to tell you the skunk is cute. You like him? Oh, thank you. Hey, he showed up out of it. I couldn't believe it. Right. Uh, to that man that called about the program being crap, you know, that's the same guy. Yeah. Called in and complained uh, that people complain about Mercyhurst. Yet if he had that same problem, mm -hmm. he's the first guy complaining. Well, I had to, I had the clock working on him today because I was hoping. You know, he jumped on me, and I've been trying to keep the calls down, but... Well, if he has any complaints with landlords, he should come Wednesday night to the city council meeting. Oh, are you going to show up? Well, the people should show up if they got any problems with Mercyhurst or the landlord. Well, we put it out there to him at the last meeting uh, of the uh, neighborhood watch. We told him they got to get involved, because if they don't, uh, council will not take him serious, you know. So if anybody's got that man that's always complaining about Mercyhurst... He should be, uh, or with landlords, he should be down at that meeting. How about the story about the kid that was racing on campus and hit, what the, an idiot. hit the corner of the library? What an idiot. It's a good thing he didn't go right through that glass. I know, you know, that, that goes just, I don't, you know, I don't understand what's going on sometimes. do something with those kids because they're, they're getting out of control. Well, they need to be held to the same standards that uh, you and I are held to. Right. You know, my neighbors have parties once in a while, and but I'll tell you what, they end, they end, at a decent hour, and you know what? You know, they're kind of uh, sympathetic to the neighborhood, you know. This is 2.30 in the morning. Doesn't yeah. that kid go to school in the next day? I, you know, you think not. I guess not. There, there was an old, well, I, you know, if I say this, I'll show my age, but <laughs> when I was in college, they had a little thing called the draft. And if you didn't study real hard, you, oh, yeah. you, you got a job offer real quick. Oh, Dad probably paid the, do, paid the yeah. fine, and that was it. Yeah, it was two years in the Army. You know, that was a... How about that for a deal? That was uh, only $1,000. That's nothing. No, that's why... I laugh at the fines that... Because these... A lot of... Today, parents got... Uh, and I shouldn't generalize, but... The students that go to the private colleges are generally... If they're not on scholarship, they definitely uh, are in a different economic strata than those that go to state schools. Uh, Mercier's got... They keep getting from the Liquor Control Board. Uh, evidently, something's not working there. Well, they, you know what? They've, they've worked with our city police department. Uh, they've gone out some nights and done, uh, you know, they, they, they don't want the public to know when they're going to do it or where, but they've, uh, they've done a run of some of the various uh, watering holes around town well, and, and also the parties where they know they've existed. Well, they can't drink on campus, so they go into the residential area and drink. Yep, I guess I, I don't even know if the older kids can drink on campus, but... I don't think anybody can. But that's a trouble. They drink off campus. Off campus. Yeah, you know what? Even though it's wrong, if they stay in the house and just keep quiet, you know, but, oh, they're, out, no. but they're out there driving their cars and, and, and causing all this crap, and, it, you know, it's just out of hand. Well, I'm sure this man is really interested in this conversation. No, he probably isn't, but that's okay. <laughs> the skunk is still cute. You like I'm him? Good. I'm listening. I'm. I'm, I'm going to send him over to your house tonight, okay? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Thank you, Ken. See you okay. Wednesday. Yeah. Speaking of the kids being crazy and out of control, why are they walking in the streets in the middle of summer? That now that I, I know I've heard complaints about in wintertime when the streets ain't plowed. It used to it used to bother our late councilman friend Jimmy. Right. And it does. You know, you're walking and going. You got all these sidewalks, and you even see people that are uh, physically challenged with the wheelchairs out yeah, there. Yeah. And you're going, what, what are you doing on the street? That's the worst place you could be. You know. I was coming over the hill on 18th Street, where um, what's that bridge that that's closed down right now? Oh, McBride Viaduct. McBride Viaduct over that bridge right there. There was a guy standing in the middle of the lane, walking. Hold on one second, caller. He, he was standing there in the middle of the road, and I'm driving. He's here, and I'm here, and I don't see him, and I get, like, right up to him. He just gives me a look like, 
Yeah, like what? A, I'm here and you shouldn't be. So I went around him and he kept walking. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Kaz. Yeah. This is President's Day. Is that why you have your partner? Well, he's making a comment about some of our leaders over the years, I think. Yes, and I also have an answer to everything. If you can see my shirt, it says rub some bacon on it. If you have a problem, rub some bacon on it. That's all I can say. What do you think about him? I think he's great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Can That's you another make, vote can you, for yes. <laughs> he, he's, he's, people out in the lobby there are waving at him like mad. I said, can't believe it. Well, you don't get that good of partners anymore. Got to get city council down there so we can yell at them. I might bring them and have them sit next to me at the council meeting. That'll be a. Oh. We'll, we'll have a full house. What do you think? Oh. Uh -huh. I agree with you. <laughs> I, I'll probably get a comment tomorrow on uh, local radio if, he, if anybody's watching us. Hey, that's better than what we had on today on, on uh, PCN. What did you have on there today? Well, they had on about this. Uh, uh, oh God, I, I'm trying to get it right, but not get them mad at me. The, the one on 10th and State there. Oh God. 10th and State. Uh, there's the hotel there. No, no, 10th and State. The peanut shop on the corner. Yeah, there's a Renaissance building. Renaissance building. Across the street from the Renaissance building. Uh, the golf place? Chamber of Commerce. Oh, okay. Oh, that's where they went. Okay. And they, the guy that was on there said all the big cities in Pennsylvania, and he went down the line with six or seven of them, and Erie wasn't one of them. What, what do you mean? I mean, how do you figure that? I mean, size-wise? Yeah. And we don't count. Well, you know, here's the, here's a statistic I'm going to throw out to you. You ready? Yeah. Okay, the population of Erie County is roughly, and you can look it up, about 280,000. That's not the city. Yeah. The city is the fourth largest in PA, after Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, and Allentown. Yeah. However, the metropolitan area, let me see if I can figure this. Uh, Philly has a bigger metropolitan area. Pittsburgh does. Lehigh Valley, uh, Scranton, Wilkesbury. But they, they, they we we should we, we don't have any problem with uh, empty buildings. Oh, is that the way they're figuring it? Yeah, you know, and how many shops have gone out of uh, out of Erie? Well, I I we may I don't know what kind of numbers they're using, but I I think we have some work to do. Yes, I do. Because I, I, you know, if you walk, if you ride around many parts of Commerce, just tell the, you know, Mr. Barnes that we are in need of aid up here. Yeah, we do need, uh, you know, we're we got to figure out a way to get more business here and uh, more knowledge of Erie. We're the only actual lake park that Pennsylvania has. Yep, you're right, and that uh, that was uh, done many, many years ago. Actually, we would have probably been a part of New York more than anything. And, uh, you know, some people wonder if the state has lost interest in us sometimes. All right, thank you. Hey, thank you for calling. Thank you. Yeah, it's interesting why Erie was became part of Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah, it goes back to being a lake port, but yeah. if you look at it, we were probably more carved out of New York than anything. Yeah, yeah. Some more of your fan club. Oh, let's see. Go ahead, caller. Yeah, I just wanted to call back, Kaz, to let the lady know that called that I'm not the one that calls and complains about Mercyhurst. I'm the one that calls and complains about the streetlights. Oh. Pardon? And I'm the, one that I'm the one that calls and complains about the um, roads not being plowed. <clears throat> so, well, I agree with you on the plowing. I think the plowing has to be done a little differently. Uh, the street lights, I, I know you don't believe me, but that will be taken care of shortly. Right. Now it's, you, cool. it's cool. Like I said, i got to bet with you. But anyhow, I just wanted to, I, I also wanted to make something. I seen that you said you were keeping track of my 10 minutes there, 
And uh, it's good to know that you, you keep, we're going to keep me to my 10-minute time limit, but you never have a problem with John talking for 20 oh, actually, minutes or half hour. Actually, Skunky's hey, watching Skunk, it. Skunk Man there. Yes, sir. I wanted to tell you, I have your answer of why people walk in the middle of the streets. Why is that? Skunk. The reason they walk in the middle of the streets because we have a police force that does not enforce them staying out of the street. And uh, I called here three years ago and complained about the same thing you just asked. And the guy sitting beside you laughed and thought it was like a joke that people walk down the middle of the street. So if people's going to walk down the middle of the street and the police ain't going to do nothing about it, you're going to have to stop your vehicle and let them, uh, you know, let them walk in the street because no one does nothing about it. It's a big joke to the city of Erie, people walking in the middle of the street. So, hey, Kaz, I'll be getting a hold of you in a month here about them lights, buddy, for our bet. You said it'd be done in 90 days. We are three-quarters of the way through the uh, actual assembly, you know, but uh, I'll, I'll be glad to talk to you about it. Let's see. We got maybe two more minutes. Okay. You got anything you want to say? Um... I'm very hungry. Um, if anybody has any garbage sitting out, I'll be over later. Thank you for having me. You, 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 you know, if you come uh, to our side of town, <laughs> we might, you know, maybe we should push the state of Pennsylvania to make the, uh, the uh, skunk, the uh, state, state animal, what do you think? That would be uh, pretty interesting. I'm sure there would be some complaints about that. You think your brother, the raccoons, would get mad? Or? I think they'd be flustered, yeah. Go ahead, caller. Uh, yeah. Uh, getting back to that uh, spring cleanup. Yeah. But you tell me, I got a couch that I had to put in the back of my house. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to put it out in the street, but I can't do it by myself or... Maybe even two people. It, will they still pick that couch up, or they just leave it because it's too heavy? Where the one that's I mean, out front. You mean if you get it out front of your house? Yeah. They got a lifter that uh, they got some kind of device. They told me that will uh, lift uh, heavy things. Well, okay, but you have to let them know ahead of time so they can have the lifter come with them. Oh, you know, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea. But I'll tell you what I'll do, and I'll announce it next week. I'll ask Public Works. I, I think a lot of times if the workers themselves say that's too heavy, yeah. they, will, they will send a device out. I, I think it's like a mini lift. But I will ask uh, Public Works about how they handle, uh, you know, heavy objects. Because, because um, it was heavy to start with, and it's been out here all winter. Well, it's probably like one of them. I, I remember one time I had a move when, when my daughter was in college, it had one of those built-in, like, uh, pull-out beds on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I got one of those. Oh, those are, it takes two men and maybe a little boy to help you. Hey, be careful when you move that out of the backyard. There might be some of my friends in there. Oh, I was going to hear, oh. <laughs> That's why, you know, it's against the law, really, by the way, you brought that up. Uh, a lot of college kids leave it out. There is an ordinance that says you're not allowed to leave couches outside, even on your porch, because of... Uh, dampness because of uh, rodent infestation and uh, animal life getting in there. Sorry. So, I mean, uh, yeah, there is a rule against that. Uh, usually, if you leave a couch out there, it's in pretty good shape. It'll be gone. Well, this, no, uh, it, it, it was not in bad shape, but I got this new couch after the spring cleanup. Oh. I listened to that lady talking about how come they don't, and I was thinking it may be even quarterly. Spring, uh, clean up. Yeah, I, I'd be, you know, I tried to bring it up one time, but uh, like you buy stickers and then you get to uh, use them like four or five times a year, but they claim it's easier to use. Uh... <laughs> Look, uh, the city clerk's involved now. Okay. But uh, yeah, you know, I, th I thought maybe stickers would be better so that, you know, you call up, you get to use them like four times, five times a year. Well, that would be nice. Yeah, they, they claim it's easier, though, to do it one time. and uh, But, I, you know, I'd even like to see it move because what they do, they miss the college kids when they get out of school. So the college kids are let out after the cleanup, and they got more garbage out there. Oh, that's got to be a mess. Yeah, it is. Well, there was only one other thing I wanted to ask you. I called you a, a while ago about that... Um, 
doing your doing your phone on emergency, stacking it with the cable? Yes. Did that guy ever talk to his friend about getting that, uh, where you could stack the phone with the uh, uh, battery operated thing from cable company? You know, I don't know, think he, did you? Uh, I could speak for him, and no. He did not talk to the cable company yet because he refuses. Oh, okay. well, he didn't talk to him. Yeah, he refuses to get cable phone. He, he's just going to stick with the regular landline. Well, the only reason I did that is my bill for the total, both of them went down. Oh, well, there you go. But I did, they did put the cable, they put that box in, so it's battery operated. Well, anyway, oh, that's all I wondered if that ever yeah. Thanks. found out. Yeah, well, we never really checked into it any further, but thanks for calling. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut him off. You're very welcome. We're almost out. Well, we are out of time. And yeah, Kaz, I, I, I just turned the show on for a minute. <laughs> we'll do anything for ratings. Ca ca anything for ratings. This is better than when Randy Brewer posed as Mayor but Joyce. Did anybody call? Your sweater comes off as white on the TV, uh, sort of an off-white instead of a sort of a beige or a gray that you're, it really is. Right. And I go, with your dark hair, and the way your sweater looks with the black stripes. Invisible Has anybody man. asked which one is the skunk? <laughs> it might, we, we kind of, maybe we did this together. <laughs> this is better entertainment than when Mario had uh, Randy on his. Oh, uh, heck yeah. Mayor Joyce, remember? Yeah. You might end up with a TV show if you keep this well, up. We're, we're talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe they picked a skunk. We're, we're pushing the, for Skunky to be the, the official ball. animal of the seal of the city. Uh, that's not going to work. You, not with the calls I get from people. <laughs> what? He's, he's an endangered species, oh, let me tell you. You should have heard when we said, uh, how do you get rid of him? He was yeah. like stunned. Yeah, it's not nice. Yeah, we're not allowed to shoot him, but we can. Oh, the people. <laughs> now, the cops last Friday were called to about 10th and Ash for a domestic problem or whatever. But while they're there, they heard shots about a block away, so they ran away from their call and went to see where the shots were fired. I guess I think they found one casing, a 22. That's usually what they do for our little friend there. Oh, oh, uh, oh. You know, so <laughs> I, I wouldn't wear that thing around town, I'll tell you that, just to go to the football games. Yeah. <laughs> Is he good though or what? Excellent. You got to see the fan club out there. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, they walk by. <laughs> Little kids were crying in tears, and it was like seeing Santa Claus. <laughs> I can re I, tomorrow I'll hear about uh, my good friend Jimmy. will probably say, you know, Kaz can stay home and Skunky can take uh, over. Oh, possibly. You may lose your uh, TV show. Well, you know what they say, never, you know, dogs, animals, and little kids. And <laughs> oh, yeah. You're not going to win. You're not going to win, no. I'm not taking over because I don't pay taxes, so not going to happen. Oh, now, nah. we got to get him to pay income tax, right? <laughs> hey, does he, does he owe 3% because under the amusement tax he brought humor to the show? Uh, that's a possibility. Yeah, we're going to have to check. Uh, got to find out where he parked his car, too. <laughs> it's three percent on that. I'm waiting uh, for him to drive home. And they can, <laughs> somebody better call the police department. <laughs> Well, with that, I got to say, I want to thank our city clerk once again for stepping in. Thank you, city clerk. <laughs> good luck, Kaz. Jim Clem and uh, Skunky, what can I say? Skunky. Say good night, Kaz. Good night. <laughs> we could do like Jimmy Durante did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access, Channel 9.